Vandenberg County, prior to 1823, had not punished any criminals with the death penalty. In 1823, John Harvey violently assaulted his wife. When neighbor Thomas Casey confronted Harvey about the condition of his wife, Harvey shot Casey in the chest with a rifle. On the evening of May 8, 1823, on an old farm in Union Township, John Harvey was exchanging harsh words with his wife. As things began to get heated, Harvey hit her, dislocating her jaw. Thomas Casey, being their nearest neighbor, was requested to come assist in getting Mrs. Harvey's jaw relocated. Once Casey had arrived and reset Mrs. Harvey's jaw, he and Mr. Harvey began to have a verbal argument regarding the fight between Mr. and Mrs. Harvey. At that time, an unknown person in the house alerted Casey that Mr. Harvey had a knife. Casey then retreated to the front yard, where he grabbed a large stick to defend himself with. Harvey retrieved his rifle and fired one shot at Casey. The shot entered Casey's chest near his heart, causing his immediate death. After the murder, John Harvey went on the run for nine days. After finally being arrested on May 17th, he was taken to the Vandenberg County Jail, where he remained until his trial. On June 4th, Harvey was taken to the Vandenberg County Courthouse to stand trial. Three days later, he was found guilty of murder and sentenced to death. The date of his execution was set as June 27th. When that day arrived, more than 1,500 people had gathered to witness the execution, which was approximately 75% of the population of Vandenberg County at the time. As a precaution, the militia was called out to surround the gals and keep the peace. At the hour of one in the afternoon, Harvey had the rope placed around his neck and became the first person to be judicially executed in Vandenberg County. Once pronounced dead, he was immediately cut down and buried at the foot of the gallows. In the years following the John Harvey case, states across the nation, including Indiana, began to move away from the often chaotic, locally administered executions to more private, state-administered ones. Rhode Island became the first state to require private executions, beginning in 1833, and in 1864, Vermont began the transition to state-administered executions. Indiana followed suit in 1897 by passing a new state law, moving all executions in the state to the Indiana State Prison, located in Michigan City. In the 10 years that followed the move, 13 people were hanged there. In 1913, the method of execution in Indiana was changed from hanging to electrocution. The primary reason for the switch was so that prisoners would be more humanely executed. Hanging often proved difficult, with prisoners sometimes becoming decapitated or painfully strangled, depending on the length of the rope. In its history, four people from Vanderbilt County were electrocuted in Indiana's electric chair in Michigan City. Robert Collier was one of those people. On Sunday, June 14, 1914, near the intersection of Lincoln Avenue and Riley Street, Evansville policemen John Kane and John Irwin spotted Collier and two other black males arguing shortly after midnight. Patrolman Kane went up to Collier in an attempt to get the men to disperse. At that moment, Collier, who had recently been paroled for assault and battery with intent to kill, started firing. Kane was struck by the fire, which entered his upper abdomen and pierced his aorta artery, causing an almost instant death. Fatally wounded, Kane was able to walk 30 feet before falling as Patrolman Irwin returned fire. Collier was able to escape into an alley off of Riley Street, but was captured only a few hours later. On Monday, June 15th, Robert Collier was taken to trial, where he entered a guilty plea for the first-degree murder of John Kane. He waived his right to a trial by jury and was sentenced to death by Judge Duncan Givens. Collier was sent to the Indiana State Prison in Michigan City, where he was to remain until his death. On Friday, October 16, 1914, Collier was sent to the electric chair, boasting that he was happy as a bird. After a single shock one minute in length, Robert Collier became the third person executed by electrocution in Indiana. In 1995, the method of execution was once again changed, this time to lethal injection. It was changed for similar reasons as the switch in 1913 from hanging to electrocution. Electrocution, although more humane than hanging, was not a reliable method either. It often took multiple jolts of electricity to get the prisoner to finally die. Sometimes, the smell of burning and the sight of smoke followed a botched electrocution. Lethal injection is considered to be the most humane method of execution to date. The injection itself is a three-drug mix, with the first drug rendering the prisoner unconscious, the second paralyzing voluntary and reflexive muscles, and the third stopping the heart. Lethal injection is the method of execution currently used today. Since the change to lethal injection, there have only been two people from Vanderbilt County executed, the last being Matthew Eric Crinkles. On May 3, 1994, Matthew and his wife Debbie were having ongoing financial and marital problems, which had reached their boiling point. 
Debbie threatened to leave Matthew. However, he refused to let that happen and threatened to kill her if she left. During the argument, Matthew fired a shot in the hall. Evansville police officers were called to the Wrinkles home, located at 1719 South Bedford Avenue, at which point Matthew Wrinkles was arrested. Following her husband's arrest, Debbie moved out of the house and went to live with her brother, Tony Fulkerson, and his wife, Natalie. Soon after Matthew's release, the couple filed for divorce. His mother, having become increasingly concerned about her son's behavior, had him committed for an evaluation. After three days, he was released, at which point he went looking for Debbie. On July 21, 1994, Wrinkles went to the Fulkerson's house at 4119 Tremont Road. Armed with a 357 caliber handgun and dressed in camouflage, he cut the telephone wires and kicked in the back door. Minutes later, Debbie was dead with a gunshot wound to the chest. Tony Fulkerson was dead with gunshot wounds in his face, hip, chest, and back. And Natalie Fulkerson was dead with a gunshot wound to the face. Wrinkles was arrested at his cousin's home, where the murder weapon was found. On May 20, 1995, Wrinkles was found guilty of the murders of Debbie, Natalie, and Tony, and on June 14, he was sentenced to death. After numerous denied appeals, Wrinkles was executed shortly after midnight on December 11, 2009, by lethal injection at the Indiana State Prison in Michigan City. Since 1823, nine people from Vandenberg County have been executed following judicial process. Since that time, the process and methods of execution have evolved to ensure that the death penalty remains a humane and respected form of punishment. The death penalty has withstood challenges to the United States Supreme Court and to this day remains as a potential sentence for those convicted of capital offenses. As of January 1, 2011, there is one person from Vandenberg County awaiting execution on death row.